hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to Chillin' with Millen. Today we have one of my dear friends and, and team member, actually, Steve. Steve, would you please introduce yourself and what you do for Microsoft? Sure, happy to. So, Millen, um, for the audience, I'm Steve Goodman. I'm a Microsoft uh, Customer Success Manager. What that means, I basically go into large corporations and I help them take the Microsoft technology they own today and uh, get more value out of it. Absolutely. Steve is definitely one of the best folks. And Steve, uh, I like to start these out with a fun and unique fact. So can you give us one about yourself? Well, so I own a ranch and on that ranch, I have a dump truck. And <laughs> so I can drive that dump truck around and uh, dump dirt in, in different <laughs> places. So I love it. Steve has his own dump truck. I, I don't think any of my future guests are going to beat that one, Steve. That's a good one. So Maybe not. if they do, I want to know who they are because I can probably use their help. <laughs> All right, Steve. Well, without further ado, would you uh, share your desktop to show us how you use Teams to achieve more? Sure. So today, Millen, I'm going to talk about a, a newly released product from Microsoft. It's called, uh, now it's called Dataverse for Teams. Some of you all may know it as Oakdale. So Millen, today I'm going to talk about low-code, no-code app development. Okay, and I don't even like using the term app development. Uh, I like thinking of it as snapping Lego blocks together mm. and to create a way to streamline business processes with a, a, an app that's built from a departmental perspective. So what Microsoft has done, traditionally we had what was called Power Apps and Power Apps was a low code, no, no code platform that allowed people to build um, applications and the bar to get over to do it is literally someone who knows Excel and can write macros or can write advanced formulas can pick up Power Apps pretty easily. Well, Microsoft took it a step further with a new product that's coming out today called Dataverse for Teams, mm -hmm. previously known as Oakdale. And what Oakdale team, a metaver a Dataverse for Teams allowed us to do is allows us to work right inside of Teams to build that application that we're gonna make available for others to use. Mm -hmm. And for those watching today, if you wanna get started with this, it's really as simple as going to the three ellipse button in the left-hand corner there of your bar and typing in the word Power Apps, and you will see this Power Apps icon. And when you click it, mm -hmm. it'll start the install process, and then you'll wanna right-click the icon and you wanna click Pin. So I'll mm -hmm. show you that real quick right here. You go here, you can pick any app and right click it and pin it. Once the app gets pinned, you will have this Power Apps icon listed right here. And this will be a space for you to start working on this little application you want to build. Yeah. Yeah. And Steve, I want to say too, you know, for folks listening, uh, I think he did a good job teeing it up. It, it can sound intimidating. It could sound like, you know, you need a master's in computer science. To do this, I assure you, I'm not a good coder. I've never been a good coder, um, but I have built a power app, a simple one in five minutes. So if I could do it, you could do it. <laughs> Correct, Millen. Uh, I'm not a developer either. And I built a couple of different apps for my customers within a, sh a day to a few short days by just putting the snapping the Lego blocks together. So once you all get the interface loaded, you're gonna see, for me, I've got a recent list of applications that I've worked on. You'll see the create an app if you wanna start from scratch. But I recommend no one today start by creating an app from scratch. What I recommend you do is you leverage one of the three templates that we've already pre-built in the package, and then you can go in there and take it apart and you can customize it, you can learn uh, and understand how we made things work. It's really kind of, it's really easy to do. Uh, and then if you, for some reason, really like what you see, you can actually go down and learn even more with the built-in training we provided here at the bottom. But today, I'm going to focus on the uh, issuing reporting, issues reporting app. And what this is going to do, it's a simple app that fixes, that helps with the following scenario. So let's say that you've got a project that you're trying to roll out to people and it was a some type of application testing where you wanted to get people's feedback after they kind of tested the app. Well, you would give them access to the app and you'd need a way to collect reporting issues that they found. Well, the issue reporting app is built just to do that. So after you get it installed, it yeah, will before, appear. Before you hop off too, Steve, I know, I know we're going to demo that. I just want folks to look at this too because I'm, I don't have a crystal ball, but I would suspect that this list will just evolve 
uh, with more and more templates because this is a little bit new. But I was even eyeballing that first one just for folks, you know, watching right now, the employee ideas. I know even during COVID, that one's becoming more and more popular to connect people in a virtual world. Um, I think that could be a really valuable one as well. Uh, but Steve, I just wanted to throw that shout out there to let them know that I'm sure this will evolve. No, that's good. Yes, absolutely. We've been told there will be more built-in templates for very common scenarios inside of corporations. So let's jump over to our team and let you see what the app look like. So I've already run the run the install. I just clicked on it. That's as far as the install was needed. And I didn't need any admin privileges or anything. As long as I had access to Power Apps and Teams, I was good to go because this is all containerized with inside of a team. Mm. So right off the bat, if I go into my issues reporting tab inside of Teams, you'll see Power Apps is loading. It's the boundaries of this app are right inside of this team. So if anybody in the team uh, has been joined to the team, they'll have access to this app. This, what you're looking at here is you're looking at the interface for a user and user to report a new issue. So in this example, I'm mod, M-O-D, and I look a lot like Bill Gates. And I can quickly get a rundown of the current issues that I've had open over the last few days. I've got one that I submitted, it's already completed, one's in progress, one's not started by some people on the back end that took the issue and they're running with it. I can also look at a summary of the issues and I can get a little bit more detail of the things that I requested. You can see they're broken down by not started, in progress, and completed. And you can actually drill down on these to look at more information about what you submitted. Gotcha. Now, let me show you how to quickly report. So imagine a user just discovered a problem with your application. They can quickly pop into the team, they can click on the report button, and they can select from predefined categories mm -hmm. that you might have uh, defined for them. So it could be something as simple as uh, the printer's out of paper. Okay, it could be the category. I can assign it to someone. And this is the nice part. This is all integrated with your environment. So you don't have to remember people's names or, or understand it. You can just go in and select them. If you have GPS, if you're using this on a mobile app and you were doing a field walk, it could pick up your GPS location and put that in there. You can give it a description. And uh, what, co what, what color, if, if it's white, please indicate the shade or, or leave it blank. Yeah. <laughs> if that's the, the color we're looking for. Uh, we could say white paper and uh, paper size uh, eight and a half by 11, right? And then we submit our issue and it's really that simple. And what's happening on the back end is it's going out and it's being put into a database and a task is being assigned to someone to go take action on it. So it's kind of like a mini help desk is what it is. So the user will be presented with this question mark that says that they've successfully completed it and they can return back mm -hmm. and they can look at the current issues they have open. And you can see I just posted this one. All right. Now this is all from the end user side. Look, let's look at it from the management side. So you've got all these issues flowing in and they need to be dealt with. So from the manager side, you end up with an analytics dashboard of all the issues coming in and what the current state is and who owns them. So you can see the most recent issue is an outer paper printer and it was at zero hours ago. Mm -hmm. I can click on that, I can go into it. Actually occurring is on the back end, it's actually built on top of planner. Mm -hmm. So you can go in, you can see it's assigned to Alex, you can say it's being started and you can make notes, you can add different things and make an update to it. So we'll go back over to our uh, to our application. I know, right? This is when, when we have too many tabs open, right? I'm just yeah, seeing... we've got way too many tabs open. I got to minimize it down here. There we go. There so we go. you can drill into these, and this is kind of, this acts as kind of a, a, an analytics dashboard. And if you want to make any changes to the app, it's really simple. You can go into the issues template, and you can actually edit the issues template and you can add new categories right here. So it's very customizable. You can give it an icon and, and, and so on. But that's the end user side and that's the management side. And what I wanna call out here is if you notice, I've got the Contoso logo up here. Mm -hmm. I went in and tweaked this out from the default that Microsoft included in the box. So you can literally change all the colors, the wording, the categories, all underneath the covers. And it's really not that hard to do. Mm. I'll show you on the issues reporting side where I actually um, updated <laughs> this side. 
I was just going to say while you do that too, Steve, that is a big one that you can customize this because I know a lot of my customers want to put their logo on top and they want to customize the, the user interface. And it sounds like this will let you do that. Correct. So I went in this morning before this presentation and I added the picture and that's pulling from Active Directory. And it was a simple click insert and put in an image and then specify the user that was logged in. Okay. And it pulls it in. So it really, I didn't have to go collect a bunch of images or anything. It just read from assist, existing data. Now, the, the nice thing about this is this is a this is sitting on top of what's called a common data store, a mm -hmm. CDS, which for those laymans out there, it's just a database. So think of it like an overpowered Excel spreadsheet, mm -hmm. but it allows you to interconnect things. So I can have a table for cat categories. I can have a table for issues and I can link them together. And it's all built inside of teams and how's there as a single unit now the big thing that a lot of people ask is well what does this cost mm -hmm. and because there everybody knows in the industry that low code no code is tends to be charged for well power apps does cost but the new oakdale or metaverse and teams mm -hmm. dataverse excuse me in teams is built into teams so if you have an f3 or an m3 microsoft license or higher you will be able to build these apps inside of your teams and today they scale to two gigabytes in size mm -hmm. so if it's it's if it's kind of a small team app and then it goes big microsoft has the ability to take that app and have you port it up to a higher platform if need be if the app goes viral and needs more access so oh. that's pretty much villain that's what oakdale dataverse for teams is all about that's fantastic, Steve. So just kind of in, in closing, uh, if we have a viewer that really wants to get started, maybe they still feel a little intimidated. Um, how would you advise them to get started? Well, first of all, at the end of this presentation, we're going to have a couple of links. A couple of them are my favorite YouTube guys that, that have gone out and done some really great demos from scratch to build up some basic apps. Uh, from our Microsoft Ignite conference, there's a couple of links that I'll provide you. And then, of course, as I stated before, if you come into Power Apps, yep. you can go to the training that we've already. Uh oh, Steve, are you still there? I recommend that you install each one of these and just kind of tinker under the covers and see what you can modify and change. Perfect. All right, Steve, this has been super valuable. And again, when you click on one of those templates, employee ideas, uh, inspection issue reporting, it's going to take what about five, five or five or so minutes. Nothing too long. It, it could probably uh, probably seven to eight minutes. Okay. It's going to ask you the team that you want to install it on. It's going to give you a, an, an example of what the app look like. It's going to give you a little detail about it. And then what it's going to do is it's going to kick off and it's going to start installing the database piece underneath. And then it's going to start laying the Power Apps applications on top of that. I love it. I love it. This is perfect, Steve. Thank you so much. This is extremely valuable. We appreciate you chilling with Millen. Have a good day. Hey, have a good day.